Hey guys, welcome to another video. I thought I'd bring you a quick little video. Hopefully it won't be too long if you don't want a long video, but if you do, we can stay as long as you want because I will open up to Q&A as well if you have any questions after I kind of tell you a little bit about what I know about turquoise and show you a little bit of my collection, which consists of genuine turquoise as well as faux turquoise. And decided to bring this video because there's always questions as to how do you know what real turquoise is. Be sure and check lots of different resources, guys. If you have collections, take a good look at your collections. Or if you know someone who loves turquoise and has a huge collection, collection, ask to see it. To say, let me take a close look at that. Let me see what it feels like. Let me see the weight. Because that's the only way you get schooled. And that's for anything, whether it's designer bags or genuine gold and, and genuine turquoise because gold is very easy to distinguish too. Once you have felt what real gold feels like, it's buttery, it's soft, it's got a sheen like nothing else. Uh, you know, you, you kind of just, um, like I said, become educated and schooled in it and you can see it almost a mile away sometimes or when you see something really tiny, you'll have to look and say, oh yeah, I thought that might be interesting. So we're going to talk a little bit about real turquoise and fake turquoise and how to tell the difference. And again, this question is often asked of me. And um, it just comes up a lot when I when I see something in my bags and I immediately say, hey, that's that's real. That's not. So if you have any questions, get them ready for me. Put them in a highlight of uh, if you put the symbol at and then put my name, it kind of highlights it and only I can see it. And then I can see if you have any questions. Let me say hello to a couple of people and then we'll get started and I'll show you some of my pieces that I love, whether they're faux or not. And I have seen Lydia in here. How are you, honey? Ojalá que estés bien. Beth Collins, Perla's here too as well. And Denise, mm, Seven Bells, how are you? Good to see you. So, so happy that you're here, Maricela, as well as Michelle. Be sure and hit that thumbs up as you walk in the door, guys. We won't ho hold you too long. I just wanted to kind of impart a little bit about what I know, and believe me, I'm always learning. So let's start, first of all, with that piece we found last night. And the reason that I knew pretty quickly is that it, it was fake was because the matrix is just so contrived. It really looks splattered on there. Now, when they use halite, halite does have a natural matrix as well. And halite is very absorbent. So it will take, if it's a, if it's done well, because there are differences. There are some fake turquoise that you see and immediately it's chipping and you can, you're can you just like, wow, look at that. But there are some that are done really well and it's hard to tell. But this one, I could just kind of tell that the color of the matrix, not only is it, sometimes like almost the same little veining but it's the exact same color on that matrix there's no difference and natural turquoise has copper in it it has a number of other elements that are different colors it's sometimes even little clear looking druzies little bubbles will appear so you look for that in your natural turquoise and if you don't see that chances are it is you know a a very nicely done actually this is very nicely done and i love the medallion on it i think it's a pretty look but it's definitely not genuine and that was the giveaway for me look at that that matrix it's just really brown Every color is just, every color in the matrix is brown. It's like a, a coffee colored brown. There's no gray, there's no black, there's not even any green. Sometimes green, you know, the turquoise will turn green with age. So there's no variation. Plus, it's very interesting, but the weight, I've heard that some people say that turquoise is harder than halite, but I find that halite is sometimes... It just feels denser. It doesn't feel rock as, I mean, I don't know. It is a rock, but it just, it has a little empty feeling to it. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just kind of know what I'm looking at and I tend to see that. But that was the piece I saw last night. And then what prompted about the, um, the coral fake was this one. Because most coral, I you don't see matrix and veining like this on coral. This is like an added crackle or something that was added to this piece and it was dyed very well actually because it's cracked right there I don't know what it is but it's not definitely not coral that's it there 
So I'll, I'll put this one down and show you some real turquoise and then we'll pick up uh, coral again, okay? Now these are mine that I bought from a trading post years ago. I've had these pieces forever. They need to be restrung. They're very loose. These are cones that are sterling. So these have been in my collection about 40 years because I know I got these when I was about 17, 20, 70 to 20 years old. I don't quite remember, but it was my first job. I worked at that particular mall that had a trading post in it, and I spent every paycheck that I got. Luckily, I didn't have to pay rent because <laughs> so I lived with mom. Every paycheck I got, I spent on jewelry. And you can just see, can you see the matrix and how it's so varied from dark brown to light brown to black? And look, even that clearness in there. Even a clear color is, is very visible in some of these chips. These are on Hishi beads as well. And you'll often find that the real native pieces have these little cones that are also sterling. Sometimes they're not marked, sometimes they are. These just have a little design, but you can tell they're sterling. And um, the variation in the color of the turquoise too. It's a beautiful blue. Look at this one. You can really see the clear on that tip. So you won't see that on, on fake turquoise. They just can't fake something like that. There's the other one. Very, very nice little slices here. These are two separate ones, but I usually put them together. I actually wear an extender on one of them so they can symmetrically fall all three together. But I love this. I really should send it off to get um, restrung because it is going to pop very soon. I can see that it's getting very weak and it is on just on nylon thread, I believe. Very nice. All right, so that's that one. And then here's another one that this one actually, guys, came out of a jar. And I had it strung, but it has to be redone. It was not done very well. It's coming out there, and, and it's loose, and it's not even on sterling. And I prefer the sterling cones. So I'm going to send this off to get redone. But look at the variation in the color. Just look at that. I mean, it's not just brown. It's You see some copper coming through. Hey, Miss Kelly, how are you? You see a lot of different textures, colors. You can actually feel the matrix, which is something very, very, very unique about turquoise that dyed halite or other, and it's not always halite. It's sometimes I use other stones, will not have it. You, It's like embedded. That's what that is because, of course, there's copper and all kinds of elements on there. Look at this one, this whole half of this turquoise other side is the matrix. You won't see that in a in a manufactured piece and you know that's why I use the word contrived. You just don't see it. Amazing variation, the texture, the weight. I know this one has silver uh, bench beads as well so that's going to add to the weight but something about just the density of the rocks, the chips themselves are very different from what I showed you previously here, completely. All right, so that's that there. Look for that, and I'm gonna show you a beautiful piece that I got, and it is one of my most treasured pieces, but it is not real turquoise, and I'll give you the story for it too, because I give stories all the time. They just, they stick in my head, and every time I see this, it's rem it reminds me of it. This was a gift from my son before he was married. I think he had just gone on vacation, first or second year in law school, and he went on vacation to Playa del Carmen, Playa del Carmen in Mexico. And he's not a very um, emotive type of guy, so when he bought me this, when he came back, he bought me this. He bought my uh, youngest a beautiful chess set and just a whole bunch of beautiful souvenirs he brought home. Well, I was wearing the earrings one day, and I noticed when I got to work, mind you, I, I've always worked very far from work. I got to work and I look, well, I kind of felt my ear and one of them was missing. So the only thing I could remember is I had put gas that morning. Well, I didn't get back to that gas station till about six in the evening, but I prayed like crazy, prayed, prayed, prayed all day. Please let me find my earring because it's one of very few gifts that my son has actually given me, <laughs> especially in jewelry. He knows I love jewelry. So he's, I mean, he gives me a gifts all the time and I don't need gifts but I'm just saying it's very special when your son buys you a gift I found it so I was so excited but I, I could not believe it but these are sterling they're beautiful they're definitely sterling they have been tested but they're not real turquoise and you can see 
from The Matrix that it is very contrived. They tried a little hard on this one by doing a little variation, right? Because they put um, a definite matrix vein here, but not here. And then they are inlaid. So I'm not sure if that's dyed halite or just some kind of um, stone that may have been enameled or something. But it's, to me, very obviously not turquoise. But again, does not take away from the aesthetic. I love it. Does not take away from the value. I love it. So that's just another thing to look for, guys. Just because something is set in sterling, just because it has veining, matrix, whatever you want to call it, webbing, does not make it genuine turquoise. Take a good look at it. Again, even the matrix is just so contrived. There's no variation. There's no depth and lessening of the color, which would occur naturally in a matrix piece. In like, let's say this one. Let's look at this one. See this one? This one has a similar matrix, right? But see how it's different? You can actually see the copper color around it. You can see it thinner and thicker. You can see the density of the color and the matrix. You can almost touch it. Hey, Miss Jude. So definitely look for that, guys. And then also the color. The color is just too good to be true on this one, guys. The reason that blue, uh, the robin's egg blue, or what they call the Sleeping Beauty blue, is so expensive is because it is so rare. And that mine has been closed, I believe, for a long, long time. So when you do find them, sometimes they're very um, expensive. They're usually in an older setting. This is an older setting ring here, and I, I'm not calling that um, Sleeping Beauty blue, but I'm just giving you the comparison of that matrix. You can see the difference in it. And this one is not. This one is very simply kind of a grayish hue. There's no variation in the thickness and thinness of the, of the matrix. No, no variation in the color. This one is a, a ring that belongs to my sister, but it's really mine because I'm the one that takes care of jewelry. <laughs> but she, we bought this at our, our trip to Colorado, also at a trading post. So this is a good 40-year-old ring as well. I think it fit me on my pinky last I checked. It used to fit us both on our ring fingers, but we've gained a little weight. And it's got a little copper thing there too. Lovely piece, unsigned, genuine turquoise. And I, I brought it out so you could see the comparison to the, uh, to the man-made matrix and the real one. All right, so that's that one there. And then uh, what else did I want to show you? This one right here. Very nice. These are actually sterling uh, beads, sterling chain, but this is not real turquoise. Not real turquoise. I think it's uh, I think it's halite. Actually, it's a very nice piece. It really is, and it needs to be fixed. It popped on me the other day. I love it, but again, not real turquoise. No variation in color in that matrix. All the same. All pretty simplified here. That's what you're looking for. If you're looking at real turquoise, you're going to see a natural element. You're going to see, like I showed you in the chips and all of that. And the more that you look at, the better. You know, if you ever do go to a show or walk into, a, I know a lot of flea markets have trading posts, take a good look at some of that stuff. Here's a little baby necklace, bracelet rather, and it's broken. It came in a jar. But look at this work, guys. This is, a, what is it called? Petite or Petit Point, I believe. But even these tiny pieces vary in color. You don't see them all identical. They're just not. They're all different. I love this piece. I really need to send that off and get it fixed. It's so amazing. But um, that's another thing you want to look for. There's going to be variations. Just like in diamonds, they're not going to all be the same. And, you know, pearls, that's how the prices go up is because... You, you get uniformity, you're going to pay up for it. But you're not going to pay for a fake one because it was all manufactured. So that's what you want to look for in that. Look at this beautiful piece. Very highly polished, but you can see the elements that go into that matrix. You can see the variation in color on that. You can feel it too. Very pretty piece. It's not going to all be the same width, the same depth, the same color matrix. Here's an oldie. See how it gets that patina. Turquoise gets like a patina. It's almost turning a teal color now. Genuine turquoise. 
and even the brown that they try to to uh, simulate, it's it's just different. It moves, it spreads, it's different depths, different hues. Let me see if I have any questions before we uh, move on. Hi, Linda and Roxanne and Julie. I'm so glad you're here. Sanja, Cecilia, glad to see you. All right. Working and listening. Yes, aren't we all? Okay. Here's a beautiful spider web that I was so intrigued by when I found this at the Goodwill counter. I thought it was fake. A lot of people thought it was fake because I kept putting it back. But interestingly how the uh, copper can be seen in the back all of the uh, the nature of it the natural element of it is so obvious i do prefer for, i would have preferred for this to have been closed but uh, i didn't make it right it's gorgeous though but i do want you to see a real spider web turquoise that is it there i did have uh, sandy look at this as well and she confirmed as yay it is indeed genuine spiderweb turquoise here's a gorgeous piece that cost me an arm and a leg uh, one because it's uh, it's got a 14 karat gold bale i bought this at neiman's i think i paid about 200 dollars for it i quite, paid quite a bit for it but it was on sale and i've had it forever as well but it is also not genuine turquoise very nicely done beautiful elephant but you can see as well that uh, the veining is, it does move a little bit with different um, widths, but the color remains the same. There is no real variation as far as the elements that go into that matrix. So uh, plus the fact that I did have this looked at by a jeweler because he had to replace the bail for me. And he confirmed that it was faux. But isn't it beautiful? I love it. And I've had it forever as well. Very nice imitation turquoise. Okay, here's another. This one's set in sterling. Beautiful. Everyone wants to say it's Sleeping Beauty, but it's not. It's not. I actually think it's more like a... A dot, not even not a howlet, because I don't really see any matrix on it as well. But uh, definitely not turquoise, definitely sterling. Pretty piece, nonetheless. All right, here's a beautiful, and actually, Sandy uh, actually fixed this one for me. And one of the reasons I wanted her to fix it for me when I first met her was because I wanted her to confirm that this was a turquoise and that it was possibly Sleeping Beauty. I'm not sure. This is really a deeper blue, but you can see some matrix right in the middle, but it's almost matrix-free. And uh, it's kind of a simple finish on there. She sized it up for me. I think I've sized this thing up and down because I had it as a pinky ring, and then it kept turning on me, then I wanted to size it back. But I love it, and she did tell me that it is genuine, and you can see a touch of matrix in the middle of it. Love that one. All right, here is a faux turquoise. This is an even howlite. This is actually acrylic. Sterling silver, beautiful piece. This is actually, I believe, from Marshalls or Ross. And it is in sterling. They actually had one uh, with faux onyx as well. And that one was gorgeous. But my mother bought me this for my birthday, I believe. She just surprised me with it. I'd never seen it. But then I went to Ross one day and saw it in the black, too. And I love it, but it's not genuine turquoise. So again, don't be fooled just because something is set in sterling, something is beautiful like this beautiful ring is, doesn't mean it's genuine, okay? Showing you that one. Here's another one with that fake matrix. So obviously fake. Very much just a uniform color, no variation in that color at all. It's a nice piece too, I like it. But it's not turquoise. All right, here's a real piece of turquoise here. Nice, beautiful elements coming through on that matrix. Yeah, there is. There is. And the thing is, they, they fool you because they put it in sterling, and you're like, oh, well, if it's in sterling, it should be genuine. And it's not. I love this one. I wear this one a lot, pinky or halfway. Okay, so that's that one. Another fake one in beautiful sterling. Wonderful piece big chunk of sterling from uh, a mexican design but again very much like 
this that uh, my son bought me, which again, I love. I think they're so pretty. And, uh, and just a touch of the matrix, but again, just no depth to the matrix, no personality. Very contrived is the only way I can describe it. Uh, here's another vintage piece. This one is a good example because it's turned green already from age. Another one that I purchased when I was 17 to 20 years old. Onyx Coral. Onyx Coral Mother of Pearl Turquoise. That turquoise has definitely greened. But see, you can even see all of that pretty matrix. The personality of it. Very different. Boy, that's almost the shade of jade right now. It was not this color. Love it. Uh, this is one of my absolute favorites. Had it a long time. Uh, the Real Coral. This is one that you can kind of look at just to see what Real Coral looks like. No matrix, really. Just variations in color and texture. Lots of kind of like potholes in it and things. That's what you'll see in Coral. You really will never see anything like this and genuine coral this also came out of a jar this was a nice piece i love that i want to show you a 14 karat gold ring that i have that's coral and i want to show you the back because you can see the natural potholes is it job to say potholes what do i want to say pit hole i don't know little pitting like is what i'm thinking pock poc pock holes <laughs> can you see it back there that's what real coral looks like. And then you can even see it here, a little white on the side. No, Mona Lisa, that's you have to just watch this video. <laughs> you have to watch videos like mine. You have to read articles pick up the jewelry, look at it, go look at real jewelry from reputable jewelers. And uh, that's how you learn. Or people who've been collecting turquoise forever. And uh, they usually know a good thing when they see it. They'll be, you know, a good source as well. But no, I mean, you don't you don't have to. I just happened to take it for, like I said, I sent a ring to, to uh, Sandy over at Just Sandy here on YouTube. She's been working with turquoise for a long time, so I know she knows it. I happened to fix that elephant. So that's how I found out that was fake uh i just knew by looking at this one actually because you could see that it was acrylic from the back you could touch it, it wasn't even cold and uh, no you just learn that way and here's a genuine coral piece here as well this one even has like a little pock hole or a little indentation there so they're, they're not going to be perfect here's a wonderful piece that's actually i got this from miss liz these are so pretty natural coral pieces here as well. Coral was used a lot in costume jewelry, guys. And I believe this is only gold filled or gold tone, but it's a beautiful piece. Isn't that pretty? Love that. And again, real coral. And coral will vary in color from deep red to, um, to that what they call angel skin or pink blush or something. Here's another piece. This turquoise is beautiful, too. I believe this is like a Sleeping Beauty color. Really pretty. One of the pieces that my sister and I picked up in Colorado. This is the one I picked up. And this is the one she picked up. But I kept them both because that's what I do. <laughs> she was watching one of my videos when I showed it once in a collection. She said, oh my gosh, that's my ring. It's like, yeah, but you know I'm the curator. I'm the one that holds them. You can see a little bit of matrix in that little color variation in the corners on that turquoise. Hi, Joellen. How are you? And the coral is really beautiful and red. Here's a pretty piece I picked up from a Etsy shop. And I know the lady. She does videos. She's a really reputable seller. And uh, she had this Navajo piece, which matches another one that I didn't bring right now. I left it in the in the jewelry box, but I have a double coral that has almost the exact same design and the exact super red coral piece. But if you do look at it under a loop, be sure and get yourself a loop, guys. You can see some white inside. You can see a little bit of white coming out. So it's really, really obvious that it's a natural coral. Okay, then here is a uh, blue ribbon turquoise that Sandy made. This one is interesting, too, because the blue is just running through there. So that's why they call it ribbon. 
and you can actually feel like a little bit of difference in in the texture there's even what looks like a crack right there but it's really more like a um i think it's actually some i don't know maybe like a crystallized area really beautiful hey miss verna how are you so that was is that one here's another my goodness there's some um, this is another old piece that I've had forever. Look at that matrix. That matrix has depth, has color variation. Really pretty. I'm really surprised this one hasn't turned. It may have been a brighter blue. I've had it for 40 years as well, forever. There are a couple I acquired recently. And I forgot to bring the other one. I've had, I'll probably show them at my auction soon. But here's another one that's gorgeous and you... Uh, it appears to be almost fake. You look at it and it doesn't even look like there can be, you know, matrix-free turquoise. But this one is pretty much matrix-free. But if you look at it through a loop, you can still see the variation in color. It's just amazing. This one actually has kind of a little cloudiness over here, almost like little lightning bolts, but you can, they're only visible under a loop. So many people do like the matrix free but it seems like Americans like the uh, the matrix all right even in these coral guys again 40 year old collection here even in these beautiful sterling liquid silver coral beaded earrings you can see the variation in the color of the coral it is not flat it has a little bit of pink it has some pock marks or pot areas where they're almost indented but nowadays too be careful because they're using a lot of spiny oyster which is beautiful in its own right but because of the depletion of coral it has really become quite popular in native american pieces so uh, that's one thing you want to look for as well now i'm going to i was going to show you oh this one i did show you that one the little vintage piece and um, that appears to be it. But um, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Please come back soon. That's going to be it. These are all of the pieces. Everything from the faux to the real to the antique, almost <laughs> vintage anyway. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to post them here. Uh, when I get off, you can leave comments and you can post them there. Turquoise is beautiful, wonderful, love, love it. I never, ever tire of it. I buy new ones, I sell them, then I <laughs> need more. It's like you just need to possess it, don't you? I, I feel that way about it. So, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't feel that I'm saying that something is less beautiful than, but you want to know what you're getting when you get it right whether it's real or not. And when you find those real things in those jars or at the Goodwill, or you've been lucky enough to have them for a long time, or you're gifted some, you know, just know what you're looking at. Because look, even the costume may have the real deal. The sterling may have the fake. You just never, ever know until you start studying it. Study those books, get pictures, uh, look at the articles and the blogs out there about fakes versus real, all right? And let me just look really quick and see if I did get a question. Thank you, Mary Ellen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Doug. How are you? Doing okay. Doing okay. We're getting ready to sign off. Just wanted to bring a quick little learning video. Hopefully we learned something. Oh, here's another piece that uh, I don't think it's real. Some people did say it was real, but I'm finding that that uh, matrix is a little bit too... too uh, I don't know, uniform. So we shall see. I love this one. That's a piece I just got off of eBay. Love that. All right. So have a wonderful day and I will talk to you soon or evening rather. Bye-bye.